Hey guys, welcome to this channel. Um, I'm really excited because I just bought a sailboat. I bought a West White Potter 15. Um, it's 1988. It was built in August, just like me. Same year. Good year. Um, yeah, I can't wait. We're going to go get out on it. We should have 11 knots out on the James River right now. That's not where I'm usually going to be heading out, which is the closest to where I live. So that'll be kind of cool to get out there and see what happens. Let's give her a shakedown. So here she is being pulled behind my little car. I think I'm going to name her Mega Yacht. She had, has never had a name before so I don't have to go through any ceremonial bullshit stuff. My bad. It's a blustery day out. Hopefully it's not going to storm. It should be pretty fun to go out for the first sail. Let's go. So, I owe you an apology. Uh, I did not do this whole thing right. I give you that nice little positive intro. Uh, I went out to give it that shakedown sale. So I've been out once already now. This, we're, yeah, past that. Um, let's see here. Everything went wrong. It was a terrible experience. I was nervous, you know, lots of people around. It's my first time back in a trailer. It went great. I had watched some YouTube videos on it. it. Seemed simple enough. It was, you know, little corrections, take it slow. No problem, right? So I get down into the water. The boat's floating. I go to kind of clear it off the trailer. And it's not moving back. It's moving a ways, but it, it catches up on something and won't go. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. Let's pull it back forward, look underneath, see what's going on, right? What's it catching on? So I start pulling the car forward, pulling the trailer, boat's back on it, secured down correctly. And how do I explain this? It basically at some point it's kind of it's feeling stuck. So I try to reverse and when we reverse and try to go forward again, I'm like burning my clutch out to drive a manual. And it's a car, just to clarify, I don't have some beastly truck, which might have saved the boat if I did. It <laughs> might have destroyed it with that power. Um, so I've got it up a little higher, up out of the water. I look down, and the center board is down. It's, you know, it's got a, a lead swing keel, essentially. So not a center board, my mistake. Um, weighs 100 pounds. It's down at a bit of an angle. It's wedged under the back bar of the trailer, and the front corner of it, that 90 degree, is underneath the front roller. So I cannot move the trailer forward or back. So, uh, yeah, it was bad. Um, I spent about an hour dealing with that. It was also angled over so the weight of the car, or I guess trailer and boat, were pressing that lead keel into the side of the fiberglass inside the slot. It's maybe two inches wide, maybe an inch and a half wide, uh, that it lives inside that it swivels up and down. And once I got up inside, I took, there's a cover for it I took off. Um, just a bunch of screws basically, holding all this different hardware in took the pulley system for it apart off, lifted that off, and I saw that the swing keel, it sits on a metal bar there, and that's what it swings across. It was not actually on that bar. It was back from it. So it had fallen down out of where it's supposed to sit. So it's way down there. And then there's an arm that extends up from it, and that's what the pulleys go on that pull it. So that's still up in there, and it's visibly bent now at this point. Not severely, but you know, not a good feeling. And I'm seeing it flex that fiberglass and that pointy corner of it just pushing into it. Super stressful, making terrible noises when I'm climbing in and off the boat. So we end up disconnecting the, oh yeah, I know a guy who works at the Marine Night Launch at uh, Janestown Yacht Base in there. He's a great guy. Helped me out big time. I couldn't have done it without him. And it's, yeah, it's a good attitude. That was pretty crushed. Um, so I, I take the trailer off the back of the car start to float it down we secure it with some rope to the car and because the boat's like right on that level I was able to sort of lift the trailer and the boat's only 475 pounds so you know you have good leverage of it with the just single axle trailer you can yeah I could basically lift it up and roll it back so I completely submerged the trailer I'm standing chest deep in like gross marina brackish brown like catfish land water it's terrible there um, never wanted to get in that water 
now I've spent a prolonged period of time in it. Had open cuts. Um, thought I was going to go septic, but here we are. Uh, yeah, basically was finally able to get the boat floating pretty high above the trailer. The keel, the way it was hanging down so low, I think it's probably hanging an extra two feet. Normally I think it's about three feet draft. It was probably closer to five because of the way it was hanging from that end way down in there. So I had to act, like, lean the boat way over like it was going to almost capsize to clear the edge of the trailer. Then it's finally floating, take it way to the deep end of the dock, get inside by this little rope, lift the trailer up, or the trailer, sorry, the keel up, haul it back up, mount it back on the bar, re-secure all the hardware, put that cover back on, finally good to go. Cool, like, yeah, I, I wish I had paid attention to the time. I know it took at least an hour to solve that issue, and luckily no one else uh, came to use the boat ramp, which was a pretty good fluke, until we had it floating and secured to the dock. Just reattached the trailer real quick, got it out of the way. Um, yeah, so we're floating, things are looking good, right? I'm like, what else could go wrong? Put my life jacket on, ready for the worst. Uh, so the next up, fire up the motor, right? We gotta go under a bridge or two to get out of that area before we can raise the mast. So I'm thinking, let's see what happens with the motor. It's a, it, I don't know how old it is, it's a two horse Honda, air cooled, real simple, right? Don't even have to flush it, there's not much that can go wrong. It's still a four stroke, despite all that, so really, yeah, really simple little thing. One pull, it starts up, just beautiful, cool. Maybe we're smooth sailing now. Haha. <laughs> um, yeah, go out under the bridge, we're going along, get to the second bridge. So you can go down back river to the James, which is a lot further to the thoroughfare, or you can go underneath the little bridge that goes to Jamestown Island. And I think it like, yeah, your typical mean low tide is like 12 feet clearance, so no, you know. I think that boat's with its height like 15 foot six or something. So I can't clear under them with the mast up. So I'm going to go there. The way the wind's blowing and there's a f two ferries that run along there, there's like two foot waves breaking right at the mouth of it. And the motor starts choking and bogging down on me. And I'm like, oh, it's probably getting low on gas. So I hadn't filled it up. It was whatever, you know, it was in there when I got it rolling. So I just spin it around. Um, I go to fill it up and like, yeah, uh, you know, take the gas cap off all carefully. Notice there's a little hook in there that keeps it in place, so I let it hang off the side. Fuel her up. Got one of those safety gas cans, worked great. Put it back on, fire it back up, we're good. I'm like, you know what? That was, those waves look pretty uninviting with that current. Why don't I just... Uh, it really rips through there. Why don't I just set the, the uh, mast up back here and I'll sail down back river to the thoroughfare, just kind of, you know, cruise along against the current, barely moving. I don't care. We're having fun. We're on the water, right? So I start setting it up, and the rig isn't tuned correctly, so there's tons of slop in it, so I'm having to go to the different stays, and it's just by pin position, so it's not like, you know, fine-tuning by any means, but it was completely unacceptable how it was. So I'm adjusting the front, adjust the uh, port side, go to starboard, to pop the pin out, uh, don't hold it well enough. Poof! There it goes, into the water and gone. Cool, great. Well, each one of those stays has two pins in it, and you kind of only need one. I knew, you know, we're, we've got almost no wind back there from how much shelter there is. I'm like, whatever, I'll just run it off of one pin, I'll move that higher up. We'll be good to go. So I do that, everything's looking good. And this whole time I've been kind of like gently using the motor to sort of position me against the current to stay in place as best I can. You know, it's an ongoing struggle, but... So it's been running for a little while. Um, and I'm like, why don't I see how much gas I've burned? Because it only holds 0.23 of a gallon or something small. So, you know, remembering that there's that piece that holds the cap on, I just spin it open real fast, let it plop off. And that piece goes, it just flies out of there, cap into the water, sinks. Cool, great, good first time out. Whatever, you know, I can, it's burned a bit, it's not like spraying gas out of there. I'll just raise the sail, kill the motor, we'll, we'll have some fun. So, I do just that, raise the sail. Uh, the way it was wrapped around the boom was awful to raise from. It was, that was completely my bad. I should have just, you know, I was, after all the trailer thing, there was all these things I was going to do to kind of be ready to go out and have it go well. And yeah, I, I rushed after all that. So I just threw things in the boat. I wanted to get out of there. I wanted to stop being a spectacle at that there marina. Um, so yeah, I'm like repeatedly, the boom's in place, the, the topping lifts on, I just keep repeatedly 
wrapping, unwrapping the sail around that boom one more time over and over again. Uh, finally finished, razor up, and I forgot the damn chip. So there's, there's that. So yeah, just kind of one thing after another. Uh, from there on, everything was smooth sailing. Um, nothing really to complain about or report. You know, very, very little wind. And as I went further down South River, Back River, I'm sorry, uh, the more, yeah, just the more sheltered it was by the trees. It's Back River and Jamestown, to be clear, not, uh, not Hampton. There's probably Back Rivers in like every place that has a river. But yeah, so that's that's my story. Uh, apologies for not filming any of that spectacle. You probably would have loved seeing me struggle. Um, I'm sure everyone at the marina did. Um, yeah, so since then I've been to the boat twice. It's now at its home in Hampton. Uh, just kind of gave it a good wash. The, that's the other thing. That shitty river gunk, you know, it's kind of oxidized. It's a 30-year-old boat. I actually got the original like letter to the guy who bought it from the manufacturer, which is pretty cool. Like handwritten letter, and uh, yeah, the boat was manufactured seven days after my birthday, which is kind of neat. Got a real close birthdays, um, so we'll both be turning 31 pretty quick here. Uh, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Couldn't. Oh yeah, the gross tanniny brown, whatever it is, probably not tanniny. But it's disgusting. The Houghton Creek's gross, you know, very brown. That just embedded into the gel coat, which is, you know, it's oxidized. It's not like you're getting powder on your finger when you rub your thumb along it or something, but it's bad. So yeah, now there's this brown on there that wouldn't wash off. I use like a real cheap biodegradable soap. Walmart trying to do the, you know, hippie healthy whatever thing. Um, yeah, that doesn't work for shit. Worked on the, the chunky stuff, which was good. So it looks a little better. Got inside of it, gave it a clean on about half the inside. Got all except one of the wasp nests. That one was looking, he was busy, so I thought I'd hit him another time. Um, yeah. So did that. Came back another day. And again, could have been filming this, showing you, showing you what I'm doing. Didn't. The rub rails are terrible. So the guy, the previous owner, the rub rail is actually coming off a little bit, it looks like. So he like coated the gaps in silicone. And like, instead of just going in the cracks, he spread it up the gunnel and uh, like down and over and underneath the rub rail. So it's just like absorbed the silicone in parts and it's covered in what looks to be a kind of black mold. And I knew it wouldn't just normally clean off. So I was rubbing the silicone off as best I could and then sanding it, just trying to get back down to clean white plastic. And then I'm gonna fine sand it and you know put some protective UV coatings on there and all that fancy stuff, maybe. I might not, but uh, yeah, half of it's looking pretty good. The other side, the worst side, I started second, um, and I did not get that far on it because it took so long hand sanding, and I should really just invest in a little palm sander or something, but yeah, that's what I did. I went inside, washed it some more, but I didn't bother, I didn't completely finish cleaning out the inside yet. Uh, the angle I have to have it at to kind of be in it without it tipping back doesn't drain it well, so it starts to fill up with water weighting the back more and more making the boat want to lift the trailer up, so there's only so much I guess I can do in one go with literally filling it up like a tub with water. It's kind of funny, but it's looking better. I took the cushion, oh yeah, took the, the three vinyl cushions home and scrubbed the crap out of them. They really needed it. Um, there's some like chunky black bits on there that are just, they're just used with the vinyl. Like, I don't know if maybe taking a razor to them could do a bit, but I couldn't get them off, but they're looking pretty good. I'm comfortable sleeping on them. All the zippers are seized, and water, as I was cleaning them, you know, it's kind of getting in on the seams and into the zipper area. I was cleaning in the flaps that cover the zipper, too, so I was getting some water in there. So I've got them all propped up to drain, but I can't open the zippers to let them really breathe, which has me worried. And the fact that they've been sitting in the boat for a couple of years outside uh, before I picked it up, too, I'm sure there's some, probably, some mold in there, but hopefully they'll just dry out and kind of, if I keep them in my house instead of in the boat, not be an issue of stink or anything. But yeah, that's where we're at. Going to take it out for its second sale. Uh, and hopefully everything's going to go well this time. Um, yeah. Keep it posted. We'll actually take some footage. It's We're supposed to have about 12 knots. We'll be setting out on from Fox Hill Boat Ramp in the back river. We might stay in back river and just look around. I think the wind's supposed to be blowing out of the north, so that'll be good to kind of go up the higher side of it and come back, you know, come back on a run down the creek a little bit and 
could beam reach it back to Fox Hill. It'll be a fun sail. Or I could head out into the Chesapeake, which is like right there, which is very, very cool. Um, and kind of, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it looks. But yeah, guys, sorry, sorry for having three days of not doing what I was hoping to do with this. I was just so crushed after the trailer thing with someone helping me. I didn't want to take the time to go and get my video camera and, you know, be more of a spectacle. Not that it would have done much, but yeah, here we are, driving to Hampton.